Welcome back everybody. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing variable assignments. Now we just saw how to work with numbers, but what do these numbers actually represent? We had integers and floating point numbers, but we don't actually have a variable name assigned to them. So it'd be nice if we can assign these particular data types a variable name to easily reference them later on in our code. For example, I could say a variable name my underscore dogs is equal to two because I have two dogs. Now there are a couple of rules for choosing a variable name in Python. And these rules are that names cannot start with a number. There can also be no spaces in the variable name, so you should use an underscore instead. And you also can't have any of these symbols in a name. And if you accidentally forget this list of symbols, if you were to type one of these symbols out in a variable name, Python would quickly complain and you'd have an error. So you don't need to worry about memorizing all these. You'd get the error as you're typing along. A few more rules about variable names. It's generally considered best practice, according to PEP8, that names are lowercase. Now there are situations when you become a more advanced programmer where you're going to want to have kind of global variable names in all caps that are used throughout your code. But right now, in general, we'll want to keep all our names lowercase. And we'll also want to avoid words that have a special meaning in Python. And these are built-in keywords like list or str for string. You may be wondering, well, how the heck am I supposed to know what are the special built-in keywords? Luckily, any development environment that's designed to work with Python will have syntax highlighting that will alert you that you're using a built-in keyword by highlighting it a different color. And we'll see an example of that in just a little bit. Before we actually jump to the Jupyter Notebook though, I want to mention that Python uses dynamic typing. And this means you can reassign variables to different data types. And this makes Python very flexible in assigning data types. And that's actually different than many other programming languages that are statically typed. So let me show you an example of what I mean by this. In Python, something like this is totally okay. Here I've assigned my dog's variable name equal to two. And then later on in my code, I went ahead and reassigned the same variable name, my dogs, to a completely different data type, a list, Sammy and Frankie. Now that's totally okay in Python, but in other languages that would produce an error. And that's because these other languages are statically typed. Meaning, in the other language, such as C++, you'd have to say int for integer, and then say my dog is equal to whatever integer value you want, such as one. And then later on in your code, you would not be able to assign it a different a data type. You would not be able to say my dog is equal to Sammy because that's no longer an integer and that will result in an error. So there are some pros and cons to dynamic typing in Python. The pros is that not having to write out the actual data type saves you a lot of time and makes it really easy to quickly produce Python code. And it also makes your code very readable because you're just reading that variable name. Now this is kind of a double-edged sword here because the cons is that this may result in bugs for unexpected data type. Because you're not having these restrictions of data types, especially when you're dealing with user input, you may have unexpected data types show up and that can cause problems later on in your operations. So you should be aware of the data types as you're coding and you can use the special type function that's built into Python to quickly check the type of any variable. And we'll show you how to use that in just a little bit. All right, let's explore all these concepts by jumping to a Jupyter Notebook. Okay, now that we've seen how to use numbers in Python as a calculator, let's see how we can assign names and create variables. We're first going to create a very simple variable called a and set it equal to five. And now that I've run that, anywhere in my code, when I call a, it's now assigned the variable five. And I can reassign it simply by saying a is then equal to something else like 10. And now if I check a, it has 10 there. And I can also add now objects together. I could say a plus a, and that's going to result in 20 because 10 plus 10 is equal to 20. And Python also allows you to do reassignments with a reference to the same object. Let me show you what I mean by that. I could say a, which is still equal to 10. I could reassign it to be say something like a is equal to a plus a. So what that is saying is take the current value of a, which is 10, and reassign it to a plus a. So that's 10 plus 10. So after I run this, a is now going to be equal to 20. And keep in mind, if I were to run this cell a second time, so notice the in operator here, it's going to go from 40 to 42. If I run A again, it's 40 now. And you can keep doing this again and again, and you'll keep seeing it essentially double each time. So keep that in mind. This is a little different than in a script environment. If you're running a .py script, you won't really see that effect because you'll just have that line once. In a cell environment, you'd have to run that cell over and over again. Okay, 
So let's imagine that we don't know what type is A. What you can do is use the built-in type function, so that's T-Y-P-E, have open and closed parentheses, and we'll learn how to create our own functions later on, but pass in the variable there, do shift enter, and you'll get back Python's built-in keyword for what the type is. And in this case, it's INT because it's an integer. Let's reassign it to be a floating point number. So we'll say 30.1. Let's check the type of that, type of A, and it returns back that float. So these are the same keywords that we saw when we discussed that table of basic data types. Now, as we previously mentioned, you want to avoid using built-in Python keywords as variable names. And the way you could know if that's happening or not is let's say I wanted to start assigning int equal to four. So notice what's happening here. I have syntax highlighting on int, and I didn't get that before with a. So that means that int here is a special built-in keyword, and you shouldn't use it for something like this. So if you ever see that your variable name is having some special highlighting that a normal variable name it doesn't have, then you should avoid using this. So definitely don't ever run that. And if you accidentally ran that as you were following along, or maybe you made some other reassignment mistake, you can always come here to kernel and select restart the kernel, and that will restart the kernel, and it will kind of delete all the variables. So all variables will be lost. So if you ever have some weird kind of error happening because you reassigned something like list or int, you can hit restart here. It will restart the kernel, and then you'll need to run these cells again if you ever want to define anything, because if we say A here, it'll say, hey, A is not defined, so you need to rerun these cells, and then you have five again. Okay, so last thing I want to note is a simple example where we use variable names. So I will say my income is equal to 100. And then in this cell, I will say my tax rate is let's say I have a 10% tax rate, so 0.1, and I want to figure out what my total taxes paid are. I will say my taxes is equal to my income times my tax rate. So I have that, and now let's check what my taxes are. How much do I owe? I'll check my taxes, and there I have 10.0. So now I can perform logic with variable names. And this is a lot more readable than just using integers or floating point numbers, because now I have this nice, almost English sentence that says my taxes is equal to my income times my tax rate. Okay, so we've learned some basic numbers in Python, we've learned how to do arithmetic, and we've wrapped it up by learning how to do variable assignment in Python. Up next, we're going to learn about strings. I'll see you there.